what you guys today we're taking a look at things to consider before buying a used computer now we all know the climate we're living in right now is very difficult to build a brand new computer and get new computer components so people are turning to used computers so we're going to take a look at the things to look out for before you spend your hard-earned cash but before that we're going to take a word from today's sponsor cd key sales now if you're looking for a windows 10 pro oem key to activate windows then use my uh, promo code capital b capital r 9 and submit your order head over to the activation and change product key paste in the key you just purchased and then click on the activation button to activate your version of windows so check out the links in the video description to get massive discounts on other products so let's take a look at this 350 dollars pc what you're going to be doing is buying an old computer components inside a brand new case so when you go to upgrade this pc you're not going to be able to you notice they never ever show uh, photos inside of the actual computer itself and that's because they don't want you to see all the old components that they're using for this particular build you can look at the io shield here and it's still using uh, some old connectors here and looking at the spec here the first thing you're looking for is the processor you can see already i5 don't be fooled by the word i5 Look at the generation of it, 750. Now, this is a CPU that was produced in 2009, which is very old. That makes this CPU 13 years old, which is way too old for anything that you're going to want to be doing on your computer, unless you are just surfing the web. So you can see here, you can purchase this CPU for $8.50. That's a 13-year-old CPU. It's not going to be much cop in 2022 doing modern-day tasks. But for people that just want to browse the internet, it's probably going to be perfectly fine. But they're selling this as a custom gaming PC. Another problem is 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. It's probably got small sticks of RAM inside here, probably 4 2 gig sticks, or maybe uh, 2 4 gig sticks. And sometimes these are mix and match uh, memory sticks. Now, the video card launched in 2010, it's an AMD ATI Fire Pro v5800 and it's only a one gig card which means it's not going to do much when it comes to gaming it's 38 dollars used on ebay if you look down the bottom here they actually tell you that it's at entry low level gaming at medium to low settings 720p so if you've got a 1080p monitor or a 2k monitor this is not going to be good for gaming you're not going to be able to have a good experience with it they'll list a load of games down here that you can play with this graphics card but you're playing at 720p which is absolutely abysmal you're going to have to turn all of the settings down turn a lot of the graphics features off just to get it to play properly and this is the problem with these systems another problem people seem to overlook is the proprietary parts and the upgradable path you can see this has hp or asus or acer or other major brands inside which means they're either pulling them out of old office pcs and then buying a cheap case with some rgb and trying to turn it into something like this which is a gaming system when really it's not so let's take a look at an nvidia uh, system now custom gaming desktop pc rgb tempered glass intel i5 same i5 processor in here 8 gigs of ram hp intel or other major micro atx brands here we can also see 1156 socket which tells us it's very old and again we've got the quadro k620 2 gig gddr3 uh, graphics card in here normally put these in office pcs and 500 gigabyte um, hard drive all this stuff has come out of an old office pc if you look down the bottom here you can see here uh, should be able to handle entry level gaming light gaming in low to medium settings 720p that's not great gaming you can also see he's asking people to go onto youtube and take a look at the gaming experience for these and it lists all these games here what you have to understand is when you turn in all of the settings down to 720p it's just not going to be an enjoyable experience now this card was released in 2014 and i certainly wouldn't pay those prices for this graphics card they're obviously driven up by uh, the climate that we're in right now with the lack of gpus available now look at this one here our gaming pcs are made using brand new components excluding the motherboard ram psu and cpu 
So that's pretty much the whole computer apart from the case is brand new. Everything else is used. You can see here onboard graphics for this one, eight gigs of RAM, one terabyte drive, two 500 gigabytes times two, and an i3 processor in here, which is an old Gen 2, which tells me it's a super old PC. It's got a standard 500 watt power supply. All of this stuff is going to be proprietary parts in here. And also he's put a benchmark graph in here, which doesn't even cover the onboard graphics that he's uh, selling these PCs as. These are all with graphics cards inside them. There's not onboard graphics in here that's showing you the benchmarks for it because it won't be able to game, especially with an i3 second gen processor in here with no GPU or graphics card. It's not going to be able to handle uh, games and it's being sold as a gaming system. So all they're selling is worthless old computer components in a brand new case with some cheap RGB. The case is only around about 20 pounds. So if you look here, gaming PC bundle, i5, 16 gigs of RAM, 240 gigabyte SSD, and two gigabyte uh, DDR4 GT 1030. So this has a 1030 in it, but it's 369 pounds and 99 pence, which is $500. That's quite a hefty sum especially for a third generation i5 processor with an Intel motherboard, which you can pick up pretty cheap on eBay. So these are all surplus stock. They get these from old office rollouts and they will end up tearing down these old systems and making up new systems, which you think's new, but all it is is a brand new case. When they're really putting in a $30 uh, motherboard, which is an old Intel motherboard like this one, that's the one they're putting in this case. And again, you're just putting an old third generation processor in there. So the upgrade path on this is pretty much zero because uh, what you're going to upgrade the actual CPU from an i5 to an i7. That's all you can do. And again, if you want to really sort of spend that sort of money, which is £370 or $500, you can put that towards a brand new computer. You can build yourself or buy yourself a Ryzen 3 system or an i3 system which is going to way outperform this old system. And also it will have an upgrade path because you can put a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7 in there. Also, a modern computer is going to have more usability. This computer is going to be for browsing and light office work. And that's all they're going to be capable of doing. Again, $23 for the CPU. Usability on this system is very limited. This is all old surplus stock from old office rollouts. Again, when you're purchasing stuff, five things to consider before buying a used computer is usability, graphics card, memory, processor, power supply. What, what are they? Are they any good to you? Upgradeability. Have they got proprietary parts? Can you upgrade? Uh, proprietary parts are not upgradable. Price. Don't overpay for old office junk. Age. How old is the computer? Does it exceed five years? If it does, don't buy it. It's not worth it. Buy yourself a new system. They're not that expensive compared to these prices. Number five, check stability. Use it for a minimum of 30 minutes under full load, running benchmarks and other testing software. Hardware malfunctions normally happen when the computer gets up to operating temperature, and this is when you're going to see issues. So always check before you buy this sort of stuff. Now, what drives a lot of this stuff on is YouTube. People create YouTube content on this really old stuff. And a lot of this old stuff is all old surplus office stuff that's already had a pretty hard life. And really all you're doing is buying some old junk that the office has thrown out. If it's 13 years old, it's going to be no use to you at all, especially not as a gaming system. The longevity of it is not going to be that good. All old uh, components, no upgradability. So really take care when you're buying stuff like this because you're going to end up getting your fingers burnt. You're going to see a lot of channels promoting old graphics cards with one gig of RAM in it, 720p. It's not enjoyable. You're going to need to have at least four gigabytes to have an enjoyable experience when it comes to gaming, and especially first-person shooters. And this is where a lot of people's problems arise when they have micro stuttering or high utilization of the GPU or the CPU. You're going to get bottlenecking. You're going to get uh, temporary freezing and things like that because people put a bigger graphics card in it and it just can't keep up with the modern era. So that's what you've got to remember. And people go out and make these tweak videos to try to fix a lot of this stuff. And really, it's just 
buying a more modern computer will eliminate a lot of this sort of issues. So if you're having to lower the resolution down to 720p and then lower all of the graphics settings down to low just to play the game, then that is not a gaming computer. This is an, a more modern i5 processor in here, 10th gen, and it's got 32 gigs of RAM in here, and it also has a 1660 Super in here. We're running at 144 hertz on the 1080p monitor, and you can see it's silky smooth. There is no issues at all, no stuttering. And of course, this has got all of the settings up to the highest they can go, anti-aliasing up as high as it can go, and it's pretty decent quality. Now, I've turned these settings all the way up just to show you that it is capable of doing it. But if you want a few more FPS to get it over that 60 FPS, you can turn down the anti-aliasing a little bit, or maybe turn down the shadows, and you will get... Uh, more fps so it just depends on what you're trying to achieve with your particular type of game that you're playing you can tweak those settings but you can see it has no problems running uh, this type of game at those settings anyway that's going to be about it for this video hope you found this video helpful and useful if you did then give it a thumbs up my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to say a quick shout out to my youtube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Have a lovely weekend, and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.